Hello everyone, welcome into another Joint Movement DBT's video. I am Ryan, this is Megan, my wife. We're both travel physical therapists and today we're talking about housing. First, we'd like to start out with a big thanks to Quantum Health Professionals who really helped us get into travel therapy and on the road doing this lifestyle that we love. And if you're interested in getting hooked up with any recruiting companies like Quantum, then hit us up on our email, which is jointmovementdpts at gmail.com. And then we'll get you in contact with the recruiter, someone who we work with and trust. So as we said at the beginning of this video, today we're going to be talking about housing. Now this is one of the first things that um, you often think about when you're considering travel therapy. And it can be really confusing. Um, there's generally a lot of options when it comes to housing. And while it's a good thing to have options, it can be really just overwhelming. Really overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. When you've got so many options, it can be hard to know which one is the right one for you. While there's not one right choice, there's definitely options to be educated on, and that's what we're hoping to do today. Yeah, hopefully this video is helpful. And if it is, hit that like button. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> so since there's so many options out there, we really kind of wanted to build a loose framework that you could run through as you're trying to decide on what housing is best for you. First thing that you would need to decide is if saving money is your priority or convenience is your priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really comes down to those two things as your step one. The general rule of thumb is that if you find your own housing, it's usually going to be cheaper. This isn't always the case, but most often it is. What happens when you ask your recruiting company to find housing for you is that they deduct the entire housing stipend that is in your income to put it towards your housing. So you don't have to deal with the hassle of calling different places to see if they have availability, coming up with short-term leases, things like that but you do give up your whole stipend, which you have a potential of saving when you find your own housing. And you can refer back to our video called What's in a Travel Therapy Pay Package, um, just for more details about how that works with your pay. And we'll link that video up in the corner. That corner, or that corner. Probably this one. Or maybe that one. For reference with how the housing stipend works, Currently in my contract, my housing stipend is 30% of my monthly income. So on a traveling physical therapist average pay throughout the whole country, which is $1,800 a week according to ZipRecruiter, 30% of that will come out to be $2,100 at the end of the month. My recruiting company, if they were finding my housing, would take out $2,100. The way I see it, if I can find housing for less than $2,100 a month, then I get to pocket the rest of that housing stipend and put it towards something else. Yeah. So that's a small example. But that could be a huge chunk of change. And so it's important to look at that when you're considering letting the company find your own housing. But like we said, if convenience is your thing and you don't want to have to go through, you know, looking for a short term lease, looking for a housing or a room to rent, then this is the way to go for you. Yeah, and 30% isn't necessarily the rule of how much your housing stipend is going to be of your income. It just happened to be how mine worked out, um, but it's going to change depending on the cost of living in the area that you're at. Some general positives of having the travel company find your housing is, you know, you don't have to pay a security deposit. If your contract got terminated early, then you don't have to pay early termination fees or penalties. You don't have to set up your utilities like water and electric, which you typically have to do if you get an apartment on your own. And then one of our biggest things is you don't have to tote around furnishing if they are going to pay for some place already furnished. You can also be pretty sure that it's going to be in a safe area. Sometimes bigger companies have their own 
housing units that they send travelers to. So you don't have to worry about where you're going to end up. Now, before assuming all these positives, each travel company is a little different. So I would check in with the travel company that you're working with and make sure that they are covering or handling these things. Like making sure that your utilities include trash, water, electric, internet, TV, you know, ask those questions. Clarify what furnishings will be in there. You know, what kind of kitchen supplies, appliances, big furniture items, TVs, that type of stuff. Also, another good thing is to ask about laundry because you will have to do laundry and you need to Hopefully. ask, yeah, you need to ask, is there a place that you have to go to do your laundry or will there be a washer and dryer unit in your little apartment or wherever you're staying? After checking all those things, it's really convenient to use your company housing option. And then all you have to worry about is getting the job. However, if you choose that saving money is your priority, we put together a little checklist of things you'll want to review so that you can find the best housing for you. So the first thing that I like to do when I find out about a job, whether or not I've already secured it, I research the location for safety because I not only don't want to live in a dangerous place, but I don't want to work in a dangerous place either. So I use bestplaces.net to kind of research um, any area that we might be working in and I found it really helpful. It has a lot of statistics on different crime rates in the area compared to the national average. And it even has a place where residents who have lived there can leave reviews on their experience. So we really find that helpful to give us a little peace of mind and foreknowledge about what type of environment we might be getting into. Another thing that I like to use is just Google Maps satellite view because sometimes just getting a view of the surrounding structures can help give you a feel for the town and the city. So that is step one do your research about where you might want to live or if you even want to take the job. So once you determine safety, the interview is a great time to ask questions about housing. You might be surprised how welcoming and helpful people can be. That's how we found our first contract. As a lot of you guys know and who watch our vlog on Sundays, we travel around in a renovated RV. We had mentioned this to the site manager uh, on our interview, and he happened to connect us with one of our future co-workers um, because she had RV hookups right out front on her driveway. And so that's who we actually ended up renting from. So that's how we found housing on our first travel therapy contract. What are some questions you can ask during the interview? You can ask if the facility has previously had a traveler and ask about their housing arrangements. You can ask if the facility or hospital owns a rental property. Sometimes they actually own facilities that they rent out to travelers if that's pretty common for their area. A lot of times co-workers, um, they'll rent rooms to travelers. And at the very least, it's always helpful to get a local's opinion of the area, the best areas in town to rent. So once the interview is over, start looking around for housing, but don't secure housing until you've secured the job. That's just an important side note. But if you didn't secure any housing leads during your interview, there's a lot of different ways that you can find housing, which we will get into. If you're a single traveler and you want to go as cheap as possible and you don't care about personal space, but you are willing to share a house with other people that you don't know, you can rent a room. If you like more personal space, you can rent a whole unit yourself, or if you're traveling with a family, you can look for houses to rent. I would definitely say the most cost effective is if you're a solo traveler and you're just renting a room from somewhere, Airbnb room, that type of thing. And then your rent cost is super low and so you get to pocket the remaining part of that housing stipend. One of the first pieces of criteria that I would start with is trying to find housing that's cheaper than the housing stipend. So the whole reason that you're finding your own housing is to save money. So if the recruiting company has already quoted you how much your housing stipend is going to be, start below that number monthly and that gives you a good base of knowing what you're going to be able to get into. If they haven't already told you what that number is going to be, you can start by taking 30% of your monthly income and considering that your housing stipend. However, that's just based on my first experience um, and that's going to change based on cost of living like we said and you can find cost of living at gsa.gov they're the ones who determine how much cost of living is and what you're allowed to get in your stipend now there's more information on that 
on our other video called what's in a travel therapy pay package so definitely make sure to look at that for those details so there's many websites that can help you on your housing search there's of course airbnb vrbo and those are really good ones for searching for single rooms and for whole housing units yes a couple of websites that were designed specifically for health professionals would be Furnish Finders and Travel Nurse Housing. You can also look at Corporate Housing by Owner. And we'll make sure to put all the links to those specific sites down in our video description. And then you can also check out our website, jointmovementdpts.com, where Megan has actually written up a blog post and those links are in that blog post on housing. The reason these sites that were built specifically for travel health professionals can be more beneficial brings me to my next point. So whatever housing contract you agree to, make sure they understand the unique circumstances of a travel health care professional. As a traveler, your contract can get cut short, it can get extended, and this should affect how we negotiate our housing contracts. It's important for the person that you're renting from to understand that your contract with your job could change and take you out of town early. So that means that you want your housing contract to be flexible with your end date. So you ideally would like a month-to-month -month rental basis so that you're not having to pay for all three or six months in advance. It's also good to just touch base with the person you're renting from and let them know and see if they're going to penalize you for leaving early or if they're going to be understanding about it and try to work that into your negotiations. You might also want to consider if there's a security deposit if you're going to be getting that back at the end of your rental and make sure to sign a formal lease at the end of all of this discussion just to make sure you've got a record of what you agreed on. Yeah, handshakes and verbal agreements don't seem to go well when your contract gets cut short and you're like, hey, I got to leave a month early. Yeah. So the reason why those websites that we mentioned earlier that are specifically tailored towards traveling health professionals are convenient is because they already know a lot of this stuff about travel health professionals that's very unique. So they're prepared for it. It might cut out some awkward conversations that you would have to have with somebody else otherwise. And oftentimes housing found through these resources will have utilities already set up or included, which is a huge help. And then the last thing on our list is to carry renter's insurance, which mm -hmm. seems like a normal thing to do if you're renting a place but it can be a little bit more cumbersome with the travel therapy lifestyle because you're moving constantly, uh, but still it's nice to know that your belongings um, are insured if something crazy would happen. And that's really it. That's the main things that we would look at when trying to find our own housing. And we hope that it was helpful for you. While we just reviewed a couple of our main steps that we take when looking for housing, we also wanted to provide you with a few unique resources for finding housing. So if you've done all the steps above but you just don't like your housing options that you're finding on those websites that we've mentioned, some travelers join Facebook groups that are specific either for the housing market of travelers or just for the travel community. And I will link all those down in the description as well. A few to look into are Travel Nurse Housing, The Gypsy Nurse, Travel Nursing Places slash Rooms for Rent, Travel Therapy Therapists, and travel talk, travel nursing, and healthcare traveler community. Those are a couple of Facebook groups you can search up that may have resources there. You could also always call local churches and see if anyone in their congregation is renting out a room or maybe has a rental property. That's always a good option. Mm -hmm. Hotels and extended stays are always an option, but probably a more expensive option compared to the other ones we've given you. Calling local realtors uh, for rental properties that maybe aren't available to the public could be a good option. Your travel company might also know other travelers in the area that you could also room with. And lastly, probably our favorite unique option, you could join the RV lifestyle. Even if you're not committed to buying your own RV for travel therapy, sometimes campgrounds will have RVs or cabins that you can rent. We'll probably do a full video on you know, housing in an RV and what's it like to live full time in an RV. We hope to do a price breakdown in the future of what it cost us and how long it would take us to pay off our initial investment. I will say it has been really nice. There's tons of campgrounds everywhere yeah. and we can just roll in and a lot of them only do monthly. So it works perfect for short term housing. So before we sign off, we wanted to share something exciting with you. So for our subscribers and for our viewers, we have a discount code with MedBridge. 
MedBridge is a database of a whole bunch of continuing education courses and other resources such as an HEP database that you can use with your patients. It's really great to have CEU options online, especially mm -hmm. as a travel therapist. Um, because you're moving around all the time, sometimes it's hard to hit those weekend courses and fly in somewhere. And so it's great to get a good chunk of your CEUs done online and they offer tons of courses. What's great is we have a promo code that you can use and get $175 off. So that's $175 off an annual subscription. You can use the code JMDPT at checkout or you can follow the link that we'll have listed below in the description. Well, we hope you guys found this video helpful and that you understand housing as a travel therapist a little bit better. Um, if you still have questions, feel free to comment below. Mm -hmm. If you did find that this video was helpful, hit that like button, share it with a friend. Um, you can also follow along with us on our our Sunday vlogs. We release a vlog every Sunday and that's kind of the fun side of travel therapy. Or you can tag along with us on, we're on Instagram, Facebook, just type in Joint Movement DPTs. We also just released a website probably about a month ago, which is jointmovementdpts.com and we have different blog posts on there and links uh, explaining a lot of what we talk about in our educational videos. And so go check that out. We have links to our Amazon products that we used for our RV renovation. We even have a little store of fun trinkets that we're finding along our way that we think maybe our followers would enjoy having in their house and a fun way for people to join in with us on our travels. So go check that out. But we're glad that you joined us today for this video. Thanks for giving us your time. We hope it was helpful. And until next time, See ya! ya.